schoolers welcome to my school channel my name is alexandra so right here we'll be tackling the jam class question for the subject literature in english year 2015. please do not go anywhere stay there and we'll be right back So right now we'll be tackling question 1 to 15. Now beginning with question 1. This question is based on William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. In Romeo and Juliet, use the exact below to answer this question. So Tuesdays is this day as is the night before some festival to an important child that adds them new robes and may not wear. The literary device used in the exam is option A, simile, option B, metaphor, option C, oxymoron, option D, apostrophe. The answer to this question is simile. Now, why is it simile? From first and second sentence, we can conclude that the answer is simile because tedious, the, this day is compared to the night before some festival, okay? And what is being compared is how tedious this very day is. So, it says, so tedious is this day as is the night before some festival so the answer to this question is similarly because of the use of as which shows comparison between two things so the answer is option a similarly question two a literary genre which directly imitates human action is option a drama option b comedy option c prose option d poetry do not forget in literature, there are three genres of literature. We have drama, prose, and poetry. And the answer to this question is option A, drama. Drama is meant to be acted on stage. Drama is the performance of written dialogue. Drama is the imitation of human actions. But then when we talk about comedy, comedy is a type of drama that amuses someone, okay, that causes one to laugh, that evokes laughter. That is the purpose of a comedy. When we talk about prose, Prose is a long narrative without metrical structure. That is, it doesn't contain rhythm, it doesn't contain a rhyme. But then when we look at poetry, poetry is a spontaneous writing. It's poetry, it contains metrical um, structures, it has rhyme, it has rhythm and all of that. So option A is the answer to this question. Question three. The use of two contrasting words that are placed side by side is called option A, prologue, option B, oxymoron, option C, apostrophe, option D, costume. The answer to this question is option B, oxymoron. Oxymoron is placing side by side two contradictory words, and this means opposite words. Okay, In a line of poetry, you see two words that are opposite in nature placed side by side in a line of poetry. So this is oxymoron. Option A, prologue. Prologue is the opening of a story. Apostrophe is also a figure of speech when you talk to inanimate object as though they are physically present. Costume is a set of clothes that are typical uh, for a particular occasion or of a particular occasion. Okay, so that's costume. So the answer to this question is option B, oxymoron. Question four, in literacy work, verbal irony refers to a option A, device in which the speaker means the opposite of what he says. Option B, situation in which a character speaks or acts against the trends of events. Option C, difficult situation which defies a logical or national resolution. Option D, device in which the actor on stage means exactly what he says. The answer to this question is option A. So verbal irony is when a speaker says the opposite of what it truly means. Okay, do not forget that there are different types of irony, but there are three major types of irony. We have verbal irony, situational irony, and dramatic irony. There are other types of irony aside this one, but then these three are the major types of irony. So imagine two people walking on the road and seeing a very ugly girl, and then one of the speakers says, Mm, this is a very beautiful lady. Okay, this is actually verbal irony because the, the speaker means the opposite of, of what he says. So option A is the correct answer to this question. 
do not forget that you can take practice questions with our simulated jam cbt pass questions and all you need to do is you click on the link in the description below it takes you to the my school website there you can download my school mobile app for your android phones or my school software for your computers and laptop please go ahead and download and start practicing moving on to question five a speech or writing used to praise a person or a thing for past or present deeds is option a eulogy option b synodoky option c epigram option d epilogue the answer to this question is eulogy eulogy is a writing or a speech that praises someone or something especially a tribute to someone who has died so the answer to this question is option a eulogy but then when we talk about synodoky synodoky is a figure of speech in which you use a past to represent an old and an old to represent a part Okay, epigram is a short and insightful statement or clever statement. Epilogue is a writing or a speech at the end of a story or a film. So the answer to this question is option A, eulogy. I believe you are enjoying this content. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and then tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos. Question 6. In drama, the use of gestures to communicate is known as option A, mime, option B, realistic drama, option C, melodrama, option D, dialogue. The answer to this question is mime. Mime is the use of gestures to communicate. And what are gestures? Gestures are body languages. So the answer to this question is option A, mime. But then when we talk about realistic drama, it attempts to show us everyday life um, through its content or presentation so whatever is happening in our day-to-day -day life it shows us through their presentation okay so option c melodrama melodrama is a type of drama that exaggerates its character and then shows exciting events dialogue dialogue is a conversation between two or more people so the answer to this question is option a mine question seven a significance of a whole through its significant part is option a allegory option b pun option c synodoky option d cast the answer to this question is synodoky synodoky is when a part is used to represent a whole and a whole is used to represent a part this popular example of popular figure of speech all hands on deck is a synodoky okay it's a call for help as much help as possible but the hands here yeah, is used to represent a whole person okay so option c is the correct answer to this question when we talk about allegory option a allegory is a device that delivers a broader message okay it could be a picture a person a character anything that's used to symbolize or to to give a broader message or a broader concept or idea about a, a particular thing option b pawn pawn is a play on word cast is the list of all characters it could be a drama or a prose text so the answer to this question is option c is synodoky question eight a crossing rogue with a merry fast a bundle of rags upon a crutch stumbled upon that windy place called crotchan and it was as much the rhyme scheme of the stanza above is option A, 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 B, B, option B, A, B, A, B, option C, B, B, A, A, option D, A, B, B, A. Now let's go back to the board for the transcription. Let's go back to the board for a better understanding of um, rhyming scheme. When we talk about rhyming scheme, we'll look at the last word of each line. And then for each of those words, we we'll look at the last sound. Okay, when we are treating rhyme, we look at the last sound of the last word in each line. So line one, for line one, the last word is um, fast. Um, line two, we have crutch. Then line three, we have um, place. And line four, we have much. So the last sound is what we will focus on, and the last sound here is the last sound here is ch, the last sound here is, and the last sound here is ch. So for this, um, s, we'll be giving it letter A. This is the next one because it is different from this. We'll give it letter B because B is the next letter of the alphabet. Then s is the same with this, so it is A. 
and ch is the same with this so it is b so the rhyming scheme is a b a b now let's go back to the screen and see if we have something like this so we can find this in option b a b a b so the rhyming scheme of the stanza above is option b a b a b question nine the imagery created in the exact below is achieved through they do not see the funeral piles at home eating up the forest jack p clark casualties option a metaphor option b personification option c senator key option d antonym the answer to this question is option b personification okay personification is giving human attributes to inanimate objects now in this exact we can see that um, funeral piles at home eating up the forest so literally we think of a uh, funeral piles eating the forest but this has a figurative meaning it means that graveyards or funerals are occupying the space in the forest okay they're taking a larger amount of space in the forest that's what it means and the answer to this is option b personification but then when we talk about metaphor metaphor is a direct comparison synodoki is using a part to represent a whole and a whole to represent just a part Antonym is the opposite of a word. So the answer to this question is option B, personification. Do you have questions you would like to ask? You can ask your questions by using the link provided in the description below. Click on this link. It takes you to the My School website. There you can ask as many questions as possible and solutions will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now moving on to question 10. The figure of speech in the line below from Aquas in the novel of the soul is... We will be believing we dreamt it. Option A, assonance. Option B, antithesis. Option C, apostrophe. Option D, alliteration. The answer to this question is option A, assonance. Assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds. Now, let's take a look at this exact provided. The controversy in this question is between assonance and alliteration. So, we would be believing we dreamt it. For assonance, we see the long E sounds in we, we see another long E sound in B, then we see in the second syllable of believing, okay, and we see the last one, the long E sound in the word we. So the long E sound was used four times in this exact. And when we look at assonance, it has to do with any syllable, okay, but then when you are looking at alteration, it has to be um, close by. Now let's take a look at the short E sound. The short E sound is used in the first label in B. It's also used in the third label V. And it's also used in IT8. Okay, so we can see the long E sound four times and the short E sound three times in the line in this line of poetry. Now let's look at alliteration. We see we and wood together and we see b and being together so it has to do with closeness when we look at alliteration so we can see that assonance was used much more than alliteration in this text and is pronounced much more than alliteration in this exact and that is why we'll be sticking with option a as the final answer to this question do you have better steps explanation or solutions to any of this question if yes Feel free to use the comment section below, indicate the question and the solutions you would like to share. Question 11. But the thawing head was tired of sitting in one position. She moved suddenly and the osses crumbled. The mountains heaved horribly and the work of million years was lost. The subject of the passage is option A, earthquake, option B, demolition, option C, flood, option D, storm. The answer to this question is earthquake. Okay, when you read this, we we'll see it paints the picture of destruction, and that's what demolition actually means. And we see that flood and storm can actually cause a level of destruction. But then the subject of this passage is earthquake because it has to do with the shaking of the earth's surface, and this is a natural disaster called earthquake. Okay, from the first line, we we'll see that we can tell that the answer to this question is option a earthquake question 12 a literary work in which the characters and events are used as symbols 
A is known as option A characterization, option B allegory, option C metaphor, option D parallelism. When we talk about allegory, allegory uses symbol. Anything can act, an allegory, anything, characters, events, um, painting, settings can be symbolical, can act as a symbol in allegory just to give or deliver a broader message or to represent a broader concept. This is allegory. So option A, characterization is the personalities of characters or the behaviors that any character or characters exhibit. When we talk about metaphor, is a comparison, a direct comparison between two things. Parallelism is sameness in structure of sentence or phrase or clauses, just sameness in the structure. So the answer to this question is option B, allegory. Question 13. In William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, I have set too much onto a heart of stone and laid my honor to on cherry on it. There's something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. A heart of stone in the lines above is an example of option A, assonance, option B, metaphor, option C, littletis, option D, antonym. The answer to this question is metaphor. A heart of stone simply means a stony heart. Art that is artless, okay. Our art is stony, okay. So, this is a metaphor, a di direct comparison between stone and heart. So, the answer to this question is option B metaphor. Question 14 Plays are basically meant to be option A presented on stage, option B presented in the aircraft, option C presented in an office, option D presented in the hospital. Now, the answer to this question is option A presented on stage. Plays are associated with dramas and they are meant to be acted on stage. So, option A is the correct answer to this question. Question 15. Travelogue is a work of art written, option A, by a famous playwright, option B, before the death of the author, option C, by an unpopular novelist, option D, on a journey. The answer to this question is option D, on a journey. When we talk about travelogue, travelogue is a work of art or a literary text. It could be a book or a film that talks about travels. Okay, it's talk about travel and we know that travel is associated with the word journey, which means moving from one place to another. Okay, so the answer to this question is option D, on a journey. We've come to the end of this segment and I believe you enjoyed every bit of it. Please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and then tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.